Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to the Piper Report. So before I begin this article, I want to say that even though I'm really busy the next couple weeks, I am working on a new video monologue, and I think you'll find it quite interesting, and it may cause not a lot of drama, but it may cause a lot of debate if those on the far left see it, because a lot of them are pushing for it, so... It should be interesting, and I think you will like it. Hopefully, I have it up sometime this week. Now, moving on to this article. Bill Maher is a regressive, and he condones the actions of the regressive party. In my mind, the regressive party is the most dangerous political party to exist. It attacks free speech. It attacks the ethos of American sovereignty. It attacks the foundation of that America was founded on, the free flow of ideas, the transmission of different viewpoints. They don't want that. They want one particular viewpoint. And anything else that contradicts that, or even attempts to oppose their ideology, is immoral. And what he did here, Bill Maher, really delineates his despicable nature as a human being. And I'll explain why. Let's go over it quick. HBO host Bill Maurer appeared Sunday on CNN's GPS where he told anchor Fareed Zakaria that he hopes the stock market will crash under President Trump. Speaking in a pre-recorded interview, the left-wing comedian said he wanted a crash so that it would hurt the reputation of Trump. After that, he repeated the long, disproven myth that Reagan launched his 1980 presidential campaign in Philadelphia, Mississippi as a way to pander to racists living in the area. Here is what he said. I thought he would crash the stock market, and I still think he will. I'm hoping, actually, because that's one thing that would maybe lose him a lot of support in the Republican Party. But I thought and predicted, and I was wrong, that the stock market hates vol volatility and uncertainty, and who is more volatile than Donald Trump? But I guess I underestimated their greed because they still want their tax cut. Okay, what is wrong with this paragraph, this statement? The very first thing that should pop out to you is that he hopes millions of people will lose their life savings, that millions of people will lose their retirement, they will lose their 401k, they will lose their IRA, they will lose their pensions, because all of those are comprised, all of those are a part of the stock market. If the stock market crashes, that also crashes. And he doesn't care. He doesn't care that some senior citizens have worked for 40 years, saving for retirement, and they finally get 65 and they can retire. And they can live out the rest of their lives in comfort until they die. And he doesn't care that they may lose everything. That all of their hard work, all of their savings, all of their funds maybe for their children to go to college, all those just disappear. He doesn't care about that. Because all he cares about is his own selfish desire. And that is to see Donald Trump fail. And it's despicable that you can just willingly not give a shit about anyone else who suffers as long as you get your way. People call those on the right fascist. But being how selfish the regressive party is, I think they're the true danger here. We have to look at it from another way. Hillary Clinton created a resistance. She called it the resistance. Keith o Oberman, he also has a resistance thing where they do nothing but uh, denounce Donald Trump, call him a fascist. The regressive media every day is claiming that it's Trump that's causing this violence, that it is Trump and his white supremacist supporters that are ca causing the hostility between one another. We have people like Loretta Lynch making a statement after Trump was elected saying that our rights are being taken away every day and we have to stand up for them and there will be bloodshed and yes, some people may die. Calling for bloodshed on the street because somebody won the presidency who you did not want to win. And I hear people like on the Young Turks, <laughs> Young Turks, Chank say that the right does this far more than the left. And I 
listen and I watch and I search for a lot of different articles and news and YouTube videos. I follow everything from progressive to centrist to libertarian to right wing to far right. I mean everything. I am sub to a lot of progressives, believe it or not. And I actually do watch them. And nowhere in my research do I see the amount of hatred on the right wing side as I do on the left wing side. The left wing side is extrapolated like by a hundred compared to the right wing. The regressive media, the left wing media, they do this every day. And they're also they're making it okay to hate Donald Trump because they're saying he's a fascist or he is mentally ill or he's going to nuke some poor country. But they don't tell the people that Donald Trump cannot unilaterally nuke a country. There's a two-man rule. He will need the Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, to sign off on it. And Mattis will never do a proactive nuclear strike unless there was absolute cause and reason. But they, they don't want to tell this. They want people to view Donald Trump as an insane person who could send nukes off at all the time. And I read a lot of different comments. People really do think Trump can use nuclear weapons all by himself. They don't understand that. No, he cannot. The two-man rule is set up for that. And before I go here, I'll post, post the article in the description. Um, the rest of this is nothing really, but you can read it if you want. I saw another article today, and it was a Tampa Bay professor said that those in Texas deserved what they got, which was Hurricane Harvey, since they voted for Donald Trump for president. I kid you not. A professor said that on Twitter. That is karma. How much hatred can you have in your heart to laugh and to make light and to blame the atrocities in Texas on the people? You know people have died in Texas? Millions of dollar property damage has happened? People have lost their homes? People have lost their assets, essentially their lifestyle. We see people on the far left, the regressive left, do this kind of behavior. We see that Tampa Bay professor. We see B Bill Maher. We see Loretta Lynch. We see Don Lemon. We see all of these people doing these despicable things. And they try to make it seem like Donald Trump is a lunatic. That Donald Trump is the bad one here. The regressive left is the most dangerous political party to exist. And that's, that's saying a lot. The most dangerous. Because they view the trajectory of America in a much different direction than everyone else does. Everyone else knows that things are bad right now and that we should try to come together to try to alleviate the suffering. Progressives, they view this differently. They like the way things are devolving right now. They look at it as a success, that there is more segregation, there is more cultural appropriation, there is more hostility. Salon recently did an article talking about uh, the upcoming civil war and they asked, which side are you going to pick? The, white, the right wing, white supremacist side or the other side? They are already trying to garner support for their side. They want this civil war. And one last thing before I go here, it kind of has to do with the whole this regressive mentality that, for instance, Bill Maher wants millions of people to lose their life savings just uh, for Donald Trump loses support. We see this same type of behavior and same type of mentality for the congressional Democrats. They don't want to work with Trump at all. They don't even want to work, work with the Republicans. Their main goal is to get their majority back in the midterms and then get a Democratic elected president in 2020. They want Trump to fail just as bad. They don't care about their constituents. They only care about getting their majority back. They are so angry that they are down 1,000 elected seats in the last six, last six years. They are so angry that they are willing to let this country completely destroy itself from within, to implode, as long as it gets Republicans out of the majority and Donald Trump out of the White House. How despicable of a human being can you be to actually want that to happen? Because whether you like it or not, 
We are a country. Donald Trump is the president, and the government is made up of the people, by the people, and for the people. Therefore, when you want Donald Trump to fail, you want America to fail. Think, think about that. You are systematically destroying your own country because you are upset that you lost the election and your Queen Hillary got beat. You are so upset over that that you're willing to destroy people's lives. Millions of people lose their retirement. People in Texas dying, but they deserve it because they voted for Trump. The regressive left, there's so much hatred there, and we have to end the regressive party. I mean, this party needs to die. It just does. They're so, they're such dangerous people on the regressive side. So, but I will post the link in the description. I check it out, read the article, but. We are in a taste, we are, I'm curious what's going to happen next. This is only going to get worse. The regressives like what's happening right now. And the more hostility happens, the more political polarization we witness, the more incentive they have to continue to destroy this country. And I'm done.